In this video, we're going to look at three examples that are related to midpoints and segment bisectors. So the first example, example A, says, is M a midpoint of AB? So remember that to be a midpoint, a point has to be exactly in the middle of a segment. And basically, either side of the midpoint has to be the same length. So in this case, if the whole segment is 34 units long, then the midpoint should be exactly in the middle of 34. And 34 divided by 2 is 17. So the midpoint of this segment should be 17 units in the middle. So there should be a 17 on either side. So since this is 16, that means that this must be 18 and it's not actually a midpoint. So the answer is no. So to be a midpoint, it has to be exactly in the middle. All right, example B, find the midpoint between nine negative two and negative five fourteen. Now you don't have to do this, but it can help to start by just drawing in an X, Y axis and at least sketching where the points are so that you can visualize it. So the point nine negative two it's about over here. And negative 5, 14, let's just say that's right here. So we're trying to find the midpoint that would exist on the segment that connects those two points. So it's going to be somewhere like right here. Now what we learned in the earlier video is that the midpoint has two coordinates, x and y, and the x coordinate has to be exactly in the middle of the two original x coordinates. And you can always find the point exactly in the middle of two other points by averaging them. So we're going to add negative 5 and 9 and then divide by 2. That's how you find an average. So negative 5 plus 9 is 4. Divided by 2 is 2. So our x-coordinate is going to be 2. And we do the same thing now for the y-coordinates. So find the average of 14 negative 2. So 14 plus negative 2 divided by 2. 14 plus negative 2 is 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that means our y coordinate is going to be 6 because 6 is the number exactly in the middle of 14 and negative 2. So our answer is the point 2, 6. And from my sketch, I can see that that sort of makes sense. I mean, both numbers are positive. It's in the right quadrant. So that's why doing the sketch can help, because if you'd come up with an answer of, say, negative 3, negative 20, you could maybe realize that you made a mistake, because that's way off from how it looks in the sketch. All right, let's go on to our last example. Example C, if M, 3, negative 1, is the midpoint of AB, and B is 7, negative 6, find A. So I'm always a fan of making a sketch of the situation like we did for example B. So I'm first going to make my axes and just sketch in the point 3, negative 1. That's our supposed midpoint. Well, it is a midpoint, I guess. Um, and B is 7, negative 6. Let me just label in the 3, negative 1. And I'm trying to find A, which I know should be somewhere over here, because it has to be on the other side of the midpoint. Now, the way you can do this is sort of the opposite of what we did before. For the x coordinate, you know that 3 has to be exactly in the middle of 7 and the x coordinate over here. So what you can actually do is say, okay, 7 minus 4 equals 3. So I have to minus 4 again to figure out my x-coordinate of point A. So you get negative 1. And then do the same thing for my y-coordinate. So to go from negative 6 to negative 1, I have to add 5. So then to keep going, to work backwards to find A, I have to add 5 again, and I'll get 4. 
And to check my answer, I could just use the original like sort of midpoint formula on these two points to see if I get my answer of m is 3, negative 1. This is just one approach for finding it, sort of the working backwards approach. I think it works for me, but there are other ways you could do it too. All right, at this point, hopefully you're feeling pretty confident about midpoints and segment bisectors. Why don't you look at the guided practice and the practice problems to see how you do on your own?